Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ages of Chaos, one of the latter installments of the Ages of Chaos that's going to take us through the very depths of the, what, what are generally considered to be the darker days of Games Workshop and out the other side into the recent renaissance of the hobby, um, which is responsible for the birth of the Fluff and Hammer and indeed of my reinvigoration in the hobby as it, uh, and so many other people's too. Um, before we go on to look at what was happening in 40k around this time, we need to go and look at what was happening in the Fantasy Battle game. Now, Fantasy Battle was in fairly dire straits at this point. It was a failing game system. It was really being shunted out by 40k. The reason being that it hadn't really changed a great deal, and what changes were brought in weren't really that good. They didn't revolutionise it enough for it to to sustain really um it was very much the case in the old days of fantasy battle that it became this rather tedious exercise in maneuvering big blocky units around the battlefield and what and really if you could outmaneuver your enemy that was by the, in the first few turns then you were going to win you were going to win barring some really hideous luck you were largely going to win um and there were some real problems with the way Games Workshop were approaching chaos at this time. As in 40k, as we discussed in the last episode, what they did was took the, the polyglot forces of chaos and splintered them. Um, so that people who had like a classic chaos force that had um, chaos warriors and mortals and demons and beastmen all mixed together suddenly couldn't do that anymore suddenly couldn't do that you had to collect either a demon army or a mortal army or a beastman army and back then there wasn't really any system for intermingling them there was no ally system as such so and that was a real mistake it was a real mistake because that's not what chaos players wanted most chaos players were very very annoyed by this um also it wasn't really done with any finesse it really wasn't done with any finesse. So the tactical gaps that demons and beastmen plugged in, say, mortal Chaos Warrior armies were not filled by anything. The same is true of demons. Demons really suffered around sort of like late 8th and early 9th edition fantasy battle. They really suffered. The books themselves were interesting. They were well written. They were well put together. We actually got for the first time some really interesting background because we got the elaboration on the mythological dynamics between the Chaos Gods. Real elaboration. And also the descriptions of the realms of the Chaos Gods for the first time in the fantasy battle system. The big problem was that the it was very much a marketing decision, as it was in 40k. It wasn't anything to do with the background. It wasn't anything to do with the way Chaos played in the fantasy battle system. It was a marketing decision. It was basically to force players to collect armies in particular ways. So if you had a miniatures range at home that consisted of Chaos Warriors, Beastmen and Demons, suddenly you had to expand all three of them to get complete and functionable armies. It was really quite insidious, to be honest. It was quite insidious. And in order to plug the gaps in each of those armies, they started to release big expensive kits like the Soul Grinder or the, um, the I can't remember what it's called, but the big mobile temple of chaos for chaos warriors and the Slaughter Beast and the, the, um, the Vortex Mutilath Beast and all that kind of thing, which didn't really do it, sadly. They're very good miniatures and I think they're very good additions to chaos forces. They look great, but they just don't do it. They're not enough to plug these gaps. Demons in particular really suffered in the fantasy battle system um and then of course in the shift away from the fantasy battle system into the beginnings of aos you had the end times and the end times were one of the best things to happen to the fantasy battle system in decades decades and decades they made it made it interesting it made it fresh again it gave characters that had become very boring and very standard some real complex dynamics uh we had the rebirth of nagash we actually had some very tectonic shake-ups of the geographical sis of the the geography of the old world you had things like nagash's black pyramid uprooting itself from kemri and relocating itself in sylvania you had things like 
actual cities being sacked and destroyed. You had entire realms being undone that had sustained in the old world for centuries, for un- in in gaming terms, um, for decades. It's it was really cool. And K- the, what they did with chaos at that point was they returned it back to what it used to be. You had an army list that allowed you to include mortals, demons, and beastmen in one army list, just as it was and as people wanted. And those were good days for Chaos. We had, for Nurgle in particular, there were some amazing releases. You had the Putrid, Putrid Blight Kings, the, um, the Glotkin, and just numerous other models, the the Magath Riders, which really fleshed out the Nurgle range and made it really interesting. And Chaos became interesting again for a brief period, as did a lot of armies, like the Undead, for example. Um, I really liked the End Times, I have to say. I really, really liked the dynamism of it, the way you actually had a sense that this was an apocalypse, that things were changing, characters were actually dying or transforming or being undone. And I really, really liked that. Um, And this was the lead-in to the shattering of the old world and into the the mortal realms of the AOS system, which we will discuss in the next video. Um, But for a brief time, we had this glimmer of hope again. Um, And what had been stagnant and what had been quite dull, to be perfectly honest, what had been fermenting for so long suddenly became dynamic and interesting again. It actually felt like you were doing something important when you played the battles. It wasn't a case of, oh, well, here's just another horde of goblins against another horde of beastmen. Here's just another horde of um, of wood elves versus a horde of dark elves. It was actually interesting. You were doing something to change the dynamic of the old world. And that was great. That was wonderful. Um, Over in 40k land, unfortunately, things were not quite so good. They were quite grim. We were reaching sort of the nadir of what people consider to be the dark times. So we had the advent of 7th Ed. No, 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 of 6th Ed, rather. And 6th Ed was a significant change from 5th edition, 40k. It was significant, but it wasn't enough, unfortunately. It was still using, really, the base rules from 3rd edition 40k. It had just been tweaked and chopped and changed a little bit. And with that, we had a whole host of new codices, the first of which, unfortunately, was the Chaos Space Marine Codex. And I say unfortunately because the first... Back then, the first codices of any system were never any good. They were never any good. They never really knew what they were doing. They never really had any like coherence and then they were always superseded by codices that came later there was like a power creep thing but also not just a power creep but a coherency creep where the designers once they got to grips with the new system and realized what they were doing would just put out better work they would just put out better work and this was very evident in sixth ed because the sixth ed chaos space marine codex although it's a wonderful product in terms of its its ethos and its design and its physical so the way it's it, the way it feels and the way it looks to read in terms of its mechanics it's absolutely atrocious it's absolutely atrocious for the simple reason that it takes the absolutely lamentable fourth ed chaos space marine codex as its base and then just adds things on and add adds things in and as a result it still has all of the problems that that codex had and then some I will add, and then some. It's just not very coherent. There are there are points values that are all over the place that don't make any sense whatsoever. There are units that, despite being new and having new miniatures to go with them, are next to useless in the new game system. Things like raptors, for example. Uh, not raptors, um, warp talons, which were new. Beautiful miniatures, really cool background. But in the game system, under the 6 Z codex, no one used them. They were way too expensive, and they didn't do anything. They had certain innate rules that made that were just not workable in that system. Mutilators. Mutilators uh, have always been terrible. I don't know what it is about mutilators, but Games Workshop just cannot get them right, it seems. They are a very tricky um, melee unit. And they are always superseded by other units. Raptors were better than they were in the 6th Ed Chaos Space Marine Codex. Corn Berserkers were better than they were. Um, Terminators. Terminators, your, your normal Chaos Space Marine Terminators back in that system did everything that Mutilators do but could also shoot. So they were completely useless. 
It was really bizarre. Now, as I say, there are certain things about this book I really like. I think it looks great. Its design is absolutely friggin' gorgeous, and it feels so cool. The artwork is amazing. And we also had the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Dark Vengeance set with its those fantastic Chosen. Now, I know there are lots of diversive opinions on the aesthetics of Chaos Space Marines. Some people like them to be a bit cleaner. Some people like them to be a bit more corrupt. I fall on... I fall in the camp that I prefer the more warp-tainted and corrupt look, but I do think the space for all comers. I think the space within the background and within the miniatures for all comers to be satisfied. For my money, the Dark Vengeance Chosen and that wonderful Hell Brute and that fantastic Chaos Lord, the Cran on the Relentless Chaos Lord, are some of the best Chaos miniatures ever released. I think they look fantastic. They, they are. There is just enough of ancient Space Marine in them so that they're recognisable as such, but they are so transformed. They are so tainted. They really do away with this, this, this problem, this design aesthetic that we've been suffering under basically forever since the old ROC days, where Chaos Space Marines have always just looked like Imperial Marines with banding horns and spikes. And that has never done it for me. I've never liked that very much. Um, they, these guys, they actually look like they've been in the warp for the longest time, and their weapons and their armour and their bodies have just become saturated with that energy, and they have been utterly, utterly transformed into something else. And I love that. I love it. The Cran on the Relentless Chaos Lord is one of the best miniatures ever. I absolutely adore it. And the Hell Brute, shifting the Chaos Dreadnought to the Hell Brute does it for me. It really does it aesthetically and in terms of background because it removes them from the Imperial Dreadnought. It is not just, oh, here's the Imperial Dreadnought, here's the Chaos one with its spikes and whatnot. No, this is a this is a tormented demonic engine. This is a living thing. It's got flesh, it's got living pipes, it's got maws, it's got like tendrils and orifices. I love it. I absolutely love the background for the the hell brute i love the the new design aesthetic it does it for me those are all very good but you know what the big problem is despite having one or two new kits for the new release they didn't run with it they didn't run with it so those chosen were never released as a miniature set and that baffles me the hell brute wasn't released for bloody ages as a miniature set the chaos lord wasn't released as an individual miniature um there were no new chaos space marines no new chaos space marines to go with them so now you've got this jarring situation where you've got the old chaos space marines that look totally out of place next to them and are a crap kit anyway it's really strange really really bizarre you also have this it's one of the biggest complaints of this era which is yeah they added in all of these new units all of these new demon engines and that's good don't get me wrong i love the notion of new demon engines new demon engines yes please give them to me now but the rules for most of them were terrible uh, to the point where some of them are next to pointless i mean the in the six ed chaos codex the the Forge Fiend is next to pointless. It's way too expensive, and there are other units that do the same thing for less and better. So why take it? It's superseded by the Mauler Fiend. Also, you have this situation where things like the Hell Drake, whose miniature I've always not really liked very much. Love the background for it. Love the love the, the, the notion of it, the idea of it. But the miniature is the Hell Turkey. It looks terrible with those feet sticking out the back and everything. It just doesn't look very good. It needs more organic elements for me. It needs to look like a dragon. It needs to look like a big demonic biomechanical HR Giga nightmare for my money. Um... Which is why I used the Zombie Dragon from the Undead range uh, as the basis for mine. Um, but what they did with that, the, the rules for that were also very ill-considered in the other way. It was so good that they had to nerf it. Because it was just an auto-include and it was almost impossible to take down back then. They had to nerf it later on. There were lots of units that they had to do that to. They either had to bring them up or bring them down because that codex was just so badly designed. Um, it had terrible internal balance. Yet there were certain units that were ubiquitous. Chaos Cultists. There wasn't a, an ar a Chaos Space Marine army in existence that didn't have a Chaos Cultist uh, unit in it back then. 
it was just not very good. It was ill-considered. It felt like an uh, 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 one of those codices where, again, like back in 3rd Ed, they just rushed it out. They just rushed it out because the new edition was out. And they were using it as the test bed. And also, they just threw lots of big, expensive new miniatures in, whether they worked or not, just to get people to buy them. It's really sad. It's really sad. Because there are good ideas here. There are good ideas. And there are some wonderful things. Don't get me wrong. One of the things I love in this codex is you get... you not only get the background for the traitor legions you get all of this wonderful expanded stuff for for um renegades more recent renegades the big one being the um the poster children for this new release which were the red corsairs now i love the red corsairs i love their background i think they're really interesting i love that they add a little bit of depth and ambiguity to some of the newer traitor legions uh to some of the new renegade forces i love that um but this codex didn't do them justice and it didn't do anyone justice unfortunately it just wasn't very good and that became apparent very quickly as new codices started to hit the shelves things like the dark angels codex which came out shortly after was way better the Space Marine Codex that came later was a million times better. Um, it just wasn't very good, unfortunately. I mean, one of the things they did do in this era, which I really like, was they did a supplementary codex for the Black Legion. They did a supplementary codex for the Black Legion. And it, in, in rules terms, it wasn't anything. It didn't really do anything to enhance the Black Legion at all. But what it did in background terms was amazing because it expanded enormously on how the Black Legion are organised, what their politics and ideology are, and what they've been doing, what their history is. And also, it took all of the stuff that had related to Abaddon the Despoiler, like the 13 Black Crusades, and it rejigged them slightly. It rejigged the character of Abaddon completely, so that he wasn't some monstrous sort of archetypal warlord like Archaon, but he was this almost sagacious character he's like a messiah rather than a warlord and i love that i absolutely love that it makes him way more interesting way more threatening and it gives him a voice it gave him a voice and i loved that for the black legion codex i loved it but once again you've got this problem with no new miniatures you've still got this bloody ancient avadon miniature that looks terrible against everything else this was the time to do it this was the time to release it but they didn't unfortunately we also had very quickly after the Chaos Space Marine Codex, a demon book, um, a, a de uh, Demons of Chaos for 40k. It was alright. It was, it was better than the Chaos Space Marine Codex. I'll give it that. It was way better. But it just wasn't anything that special. It was just the old Demons of Chaos Force shunted into the new 40k. That was it. That was it. It was kind of dull. And for a long, long time... Chaos Space Reinforces were in the toilet. They were absolutely in the toilet. They were beyond things like Sisters of Battle that didn't even have a codex. They were some of the worst, and the Tyranids who also suffered at this point. It was just one of those armies that died off quite significantly because it was just a bad codex. It was no fun to play. It was absolutely no fun to play. Um, it just did not work. It did not work. Despite all some of the good stuff that was happening in the background, you know, as I say, the, the Black Legion book is really good. I would advise going and getting it because it's a really good read. Despite having terrible rules, it's a really, really good read and it's got beautiful artwork, um, well worth picking up. For me, it started to pick up around the time they released, and this was a surprise to everybody, they actually released a Red Corsairs Codex, a supplementary codex, a Again, phenomenally good read. For the first time in ages, we've got some new background for the Chaos Forces. We've got a new Chaos Force that's young, that's recently fallen, and that has this entirely new dynamic and aesthetic and ethos and presence. I really like that book. It's so good. And also, we start to see this aesthetic shift in the Chaos Space Marine Forces at this point, away from the... Imperial Marines with banding and spikes and horns, back to the warp-tainted, corrupted, mutated look, which is exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I've wanted. I really love that codex. I love it. And I read it still. It's got such a good feeling about it. Such a good feeling. Unfortunately, because it still uses the base Chaos Space Marine book 
as its army list. It's still not great in technical terms, but the background is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, it's a good, 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 good read. And I, I sincerely hope we start seeing that again, actually. Um, after we've got all of like the Traitor Legion books out there, I sincerely hope we start seeing like a Renegade books. I would love to see that. A, a Red Corsairs one would be so welcome. So, so welcome. Uh, but yeah, that was that was really good. I really liked that. And from there, we started to see this gradual new design philosophy creeping in. It just escalated slowly, but they started to expand it with campaigns and things. Like there was Traitor's Hate, for example, um, which came in in the aftermath of 7th edition. 7th edition wasn't really 7th edition, to be honest. 7th edition was... 6.5. It still used a lot of the base rules from 6th edition. It added in a few tweaks and changes and some slightly new dynamics, but nothing amazing. Nothing to write home about. But we got the Traitor's Hate campaign book, which added in lots of new rules, lots of new stuff. We got the new Khan the Betrayer miniature. Oh, thank God for that. And the new Khan the Betrayer miniature is absolutely beautiful absolutely stunning a really good update of the classic miniature and it started to show people started to get excited about chaos again because we saw at long last that games workshop were looking at this they were looking at how chaos functioned in 40k and they were realizing that people were not happy and they were doing new stuff they were starting to do new stuff we then got on the back of traitor's hate um we got i can't remember what book it was but we got it may have been traitor's hate actually where we got army lists again new special rules new equipment new um new psychic powers and whatnot for the traitor legions they actually distinguished the traitor legions again which gave chaos this real shot in the arm it really did it was wonderful really really wonderful to see and we also got um, a demon book as well that gave us all of these these new formations and these new um, systems to play with, these new psychic powers, new um, new uh, like chaos powers and gifts and all sorts of wonderful stuff. It started to get really exciting again towards the end of Seventh Ed. It really did. And that culminated in late 2016. It was in November 2016 when we knew they were going to do something big, when we knew 8th Ed was coming. And they, we started to get rumblings that something really big was happening. And that was, we found out that the Thousand Sons were getting a shot in the arm. Now, you have to understand how bizarre this was. For the longest time, the Thousand Sons have been the most neglected Chaos Force. And this is in Chaos. Chaos itself has been the most neglected force for a long, long time. So for the Thousand Sons to be getting new miniatures, to be getting new army lists, new psychic powers, and to be getting the first Demon Primarch, the first Primarch to return to the game system and to be at large again in the 40k background was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And when we got the, the War on Fenris stuff, and we got the new Magnus the Red miniature, when we got the new Thousand Sons, the new Exalted Sorcerers, the Zarngor, the Scarab Occult, this was like like Christmas come early. This was the best thing ever. I This was when a lot of people got back into the hobby. For me in particular, I, I just went berserk for the Thousand Suns then, and I've been building my Shattered Suns ever since. I, uh, I was so excited. Okay, in technical terms, they still weren't there because they still used that bloody Sixth Ed Chaos Codex as the base, but they were interesting, at least. They had loads of expanded stuff, loads of expanded weapons options and rules and psychic powers. It was good. And we had Magnus, Magnus, whose presence alone suggested something big. The, the, the notion of a demon Primarch returning to the 40k universe back then was bizarre. It was almost unheard of. It was like, it was like, what the fuck? What had happened? We just, we were like in bits. We did not realize this was happening and we were in bits over it. We were so excited. It got a lot of us back into the hobby. Got a lot of us back into the hobby. Um, and it was a time of much celebration and of much anticipation for 8th Ed. That's what it did. It, it, it galvanised Chaos players. After a really long, dark period, we started to realise that, yes, they've looked at what of our complaints. They looked at why people were falling away from Chaos in droves, why Chaos was considered a dead army. 
at this point and they were moving to fix it they gave us exactly what we wanted in terms of the miniatures they gave us what we wanted in terms of the expanded options in the game they gave us what we wanted in terms of the background finally moving on because we had the war on fenris which was although it wasn't as apocalyptic as we might have hoped it did a lot of stuff to to lead in to cadia to the event that actually shattered the 40k universe and led into the situation in 8th ed it was quite quite wonderful and of course um around that time we also had the return of cypher and the fallen angels which was very interesting i'm very much looking forward to seeing what they're doing now because after events on cadia and after the resurrection of robot gilman they kind of disappeared we don't really know what the Fallen and Cypher are doing at this point, but it'll be very interesting to find out. Um, in the next episode, I'll look at the lead into 8th edition and also the lead into AOS and the Mortal Realms and how Chaos has been faring since. But it's very nice to be over the negative stuff now. It really is, because the vast, vast majority of it now is going to be rather positive, I promise you. So, um, until next time, ladies and gentlemen... Bye-bye.